okay, so let's do some let's do some work here. Let's do some building because you know this is this is some heavy duty stuff, and let's get to it. So, so the first thing to do again, we're going to just talk about this out of the body thing very briefly, so we can get some sound uh, principles about the space that we're actually in and how and how it really looks. Because when we get these stories about people coming out of the body, we have to realize that these stories are generally coming from people who all of a sudden find themselves getting out of the body, whether they were in a car accident or whether they're going through some extreme trauma. It basically means that they they switch frequency so fast they teared or tear they tore in a tense themselves out of their own framework for a moment, and this is why the word tear, as in you know crying, actually is synonymous with te- actually tearing your aura and tearing your vehicles, so that way they they start to leak or precipitate. And this is why the body is, is a vessel. Even if you, you run real fast, you start to precipitate sweat. If you poke a hole or someone gets shot, they say put, a pressure, put pressure on that wound. Why? Because the body is pressurized. So if you have open areas or tears, then essence starts to leak from you. Okay? So just remember that a lot of these people coming out of the body, they have no knowledge of adepthood and metaphysics. So they generally go through this story about, and you've heard them before, so I don't need to recite them here, but it's, oh, I met this person, and then they said this, and then there was this great light, and then I saw Jesus, and then this and this. And this doesn't give us any idea of what's going on on Earth Prime or the map of Earth Prime. So we're going to talk about how these layers, if you may, of our body actually correspond to the layers of reality. And we're going to break them down into the uh, least amount of layers as possible. And so these layers in, in are synonymous with bodies, okay? And these bodies are synonymous with vehicles. And you can travel into these different spaces or layers when you get into those vehicles. But generally, if you're doing this professionally, we'll say it that way, you have to have fuel for that vehicle. Just like the one you jump in outside, you need gas, So for the astral vehicle, the first one, which we call the 4D body, it runs on prana. So the more prana you've built up in your body, and you could do that through crystals, you can do that through breathing, you can do that several ways, the easier it is to fuel the 4D body. And those who start to really deal with it first, they start to lucid dream, and then it goes on from there. But remember, because it runs on prana, if you happen to run low on prana, then it does mean it'll uh, inhibit your ability to go into lucid dreaming or even get out of this body into that body. Okay. So the next thing is, is that this particular body that you would get in first, let's say the next body over, this is the one that people see things in the world when they're in that body. Meaning you actually can still see, you can generally see your own body first, that's generally as it starts. And then you start to seem to float until you're getting somewhat of a bird's eye view of everything. Okay, now the depth actually knows how to not float. And basically, because when you keep floating, you're going to go up into the next firmament or into the next body. But the depth knows how to weigh themselves down so that they actually stay on the plane And start to view basically this world, but in another scope. And this is like where people say, oh, I saw this ghost. This is because that body more corresponds to this particular plane that I'm talking about. And when you're going through this particular plane, you can see things that have left very strong signatures in the reality. Meaning if someone uh, got super excited there or someone got killed there, you will see that continuously repeating itself. You can see where rituals have been done. You can see most things, especially based on your eye of penetration. You can see most things that have been done in the space, mainly things also that have been done in secret. Because generally when something is done in secret, there's a certain frequency that's present. The secret frequency, if you may. And so this is what that first body is about. And that first body outside of this one. And... You'll also notice as a final thing that you're actually able to see through dense objects like walls. You can see as you focus right through one wall, through the other wall. And this this is because the body that you're in, which is actually an inner space, can see through the pores. The eye that you're using is seeing through the pores or the hole in the reality 
that you were recently in so we can see right through those dense, slow-moving objects. The next body over, it allows you then, and let me catch up with my notes here, because this is, I'm really saying this so people get a general idea, triangulate yourself before we go on this journey here in a moment about what this is actually all about, this existence called planet Earth. This existence called planet Earth. So, as I said before, you see things playing over like a record. The adept who can control their experience in this space does discover and see things, and this is how someone can come back and say, hey, I, you know, the, the FBI used these kind of people. They get them to determine what, who really committed crimes. Yes, I see where she's buried. I see exactly what's going on. This is what those people are used to doing, using this body. Dr. Monroe was one of the first people to work for uh, and, and, and be coerced by agencies to begin to, well, actually, Ingo Swan was. But this was when it hit really more of the public stream because Dr. Monroe was actually publishing books about his journey. And he wrote in his memoirs that once he started having oversight, meaning government agencies getting interested in what he was doing and watching him, there seemed to be a strange manipulation over his research. And thus his final papers before he died were seized and completely manipulated before they came out with the final series because people were getting too close too close to the source or the meaning of it all. It's like going closer and closer to the sun. It's going to start getting so hot. But this means something else in our physical reality. The heat and the pressure is going to turn up to a point where some will turn back. They'll actually go and even pray to their old God again or jump back into their old frequencies again when it gets too crazy around them. They'll think, oh, maybe I did the wrong thing. Maybe I made the wrong turn. So this next body, this is known as the realm of truth, because in the next body, it's only light and shapes. You don't actually see any more dense matter. What you see is the light and the shape that corresponds to the densities of the objects that you used to be able to see in physicality. The reason why this is known as the realm of truth, is because nothing can cloak itself in misperceptions and deceptions. See, physical bodies are even deception. So we'll talk about this when we come back. That's very interesting. I've been to these realms that you're speaking of, and you're absolutely right. These objects are there, and maybe it's, all, it's nothing more than what we see here, except from a higher perspective. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. The boiler. Yeah. When people travel, astral travel, they encounter what they refer to as the veil. The veil is the breaking point between this dimension and that dimension. But would you say, Seven, and this might be a little bit off, off point, but would you say that once you hit this veil, it's like looking at the other side of a mirror. You pass through this mirror. And then you see from the opposite perspective, rather than entering an entirely new realm. For sure. I mean, you know, you always stay on point because that's exactly in the notes that there's a mirroring of what goes on. And once that refraction hits that first time, it weakens the light. It weakens the frequency. So how it appears the next time, it just looks different, but it's coming from the same source. And that's that's the mastery of refraction. Uh, and, and this is just, you know, it's it's somewhat like a parabolic mirror, mirror. It looks distorted, but it still is an actual reflection of, you know, the, the source or the prime cause of things, which we're actually going to drive into tonight. Like even this whole part right now in the beginning is just get people to gear up this vessel for this travel because this is what we do. I mean, a lot of people are already very familiar with this. Some people are already just uh, some people are just getting started. But truly, you know, it's just, you know, I, I don't want to say anything before I'm supposed to say it, because, you know, even when, when you say certain things, it'd be like halfway into the message. And the other thing is, man, the ads are just, they got me going over here because they're just so well thought out. You know, I'm just trying to stay on track here, but nobody. Vote for nobody. <laughs> nobody will take away your liberty. Nobody will do this. Nobody will do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's Nathan Frazier of Live Free FM. Awesome. Nobody wins and everybody wins. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, just genius. 
Um, so yeah, okay, so let, let's just keep going through this, but it's, it's definitely what you said, and we'll get to that part of the conversation, and then you'll be like, aha, I knew it. And so as we drive into this next plane, and the next body over, not the ghost body, but the next 